Welcome to a special episode of the Secret Virginia podcast, where we explore the hidden mysteries of the Old Dominion and its neighbors. Visit us at secretvirginia.com and on social media at Secret Virginia. Tonight, we bring you the fun, spooky tale, The Incident at Belle Isle by M.A. Clean. Enjoy. The early afternoon sun shrank the James River from around bleached boulders in the rapids along the northern edge of Belle Isle in Richmond, Virginia. From the perspective of the picnickers on the eastern shore, the ruins of a distant hydroelectric plant gleamed white. Summer and Anna Mae Long, 13 and 12 years old, played with their younger cousin Humpy Andrews in an open field. A short distance away, Humpy's parents were busy trying to light the coals in their portable grill, while his uncle Cooper sat on a nearby picnic table, strumming his favorite acoustic guitar. A dozen other relatives stood and talked or made themselves busy preparing the picnic tables for dinner. Anna Mae tossed Humpy's favorite baseball cap to Summer, while Humpy jumped to try and catch it. Humpy! Humpy! Humpy Andrews, she teased. Anna Mae was a head taller than her sister. She had long blonde hair that her mother kept saying was a bit too long, but she refused to have it cut. Give it back, Humpy squealed. I'm telling. Tattletale, Summer replied. The cap fell a few feet short of her hands, and she scrambled to scoop it up before her cousin could beat her to it. In contrast to Anna Mae, Summer's hair was cropped short. She was much more of a tomboy. She wore a light blue t-shirt featuring a character from her favorite cartoon. Hey, Summer, Anna Mae shouted. I bet Humpy is too scared to go in the woods. Humpy, ain't you a scaredy cat? Am not. Summer stuck out her left hand to block Humpy, while she hit his baseball cap behind her back with her right. Didn't you know these woods are filled with the ghosts of Yankee prisoners? Some of them are still lurking on this island. They don't know they is dead. Humpy struggled to retrieve his cap. That ain't true, is it, Anna Mae? I'm afraid so, Anna Mae replied. But if you don't want your cap back, then you can just wait out here while we explore that creepy old power plant. What? That ain't fair. I want to come with. You sure? With ghosts and all? Humpy hesitated. Let's go ask Mama, Anna Mae said, and she took off running toward the picnic site while Humpy struggled to catch up. She ran up beside her sister and leaned in close. When we get to the ruins, you hide and we'll give Humpy a good scare. Don't worry, Summer replied. I played the ghost of Christmas past in last year's school play. She waved her hands in the air and groaned. <laughs> Anna Mae laughed. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. Humpy can hear you. Wait for me, Humpy pleaded. The three children stopped in front of the grill and picnic tables and looked around for their parents. Their grandparents were there and Uncle Gil and Aunt Annie, but no Mr. and Mrs. Long. They approached Humpy's parents. Mr. Andrews was poking at the coals in the grill with a fork while his wife scowled and tried to take the utensil away. Aunt Sally, have you seen Mama and Papa? Mrs. Andrews turned away from her husband for a moment and put her index and middle fingers against her chin thoughtfully. Wouldn't you know it, she said. We brought all this food but forgot paper plates. So your folks went to go get some. They'll be back directly. Um, Aunt Sally, can we go play in the woods? Oh, darling, I don't think your mama would want you to go running in these dirty woods, especially before we eat. Humpy squeezed between his two cousins. Please, we're gonna go see some ruins. Summer elbowed him. Shh. Mrs. Andrews smiled in the way she always did just before she said no. Why don't y'all throw the baseball around? 
But mom, Humpy whined. Heed what your mama tells you, Mr. Andrews mumbled, as a flame finally erupted among the coals. Pouting, Anna Mae, Summer, and Humpy walked away and headed towards the picnic table where Uncle Cooper sat. An overall lanky young man with a developing beer belly, Uncle Cooper was a bit of a black sheep in the family. His band broke up a few weeks ago, and ever since, he had been living in his parents' basement, working as a delivery boy. Still, Anna Mae, Summer, and Humpy thought he was cool. What do you need, kids? He asked without even looking up. He deliberately plucked a few notes on his guitar for effect. Uncle Cooper, Summer said innocently, can we go explore the ruins? I don't care, Cooper replied. Um, Summer in Anna Mae says there are ghosts of Yankees in the woods, is that true? Humpy asked. Cooper raised his eyebrows. Have you kids learned about the Civil War in school? Summer and Anna Mae nodded. This island used to be a prison camp for Yankees, Cooper said in low theatric syllables. They'd be captured on the battlefield and shipped down here. Many got sick and died or starved to death. The ones that made it home were in a terrible way, suffering from diarrhea, frostbite, and some even went insane. <laughs> he coughed dramatically. Humpy wrinkled his nose. Are there ghosts still here? Maybe. Some of them might still think they are prisoners. I would be careful going in those woods. Cooper grinned and shook his head. Summer, Anna Mae, and Humpy waited to hear more, but Cooper began muttering and went back to strumming his guitar. The children took one look back towards Mr. and Mrs. Andrews to make sure they were looking in the other direction and darted down the trail. They ran past a mass grave of northern prisoners of war, their bones resting just under the surface in a quiet spot just inside the tree line. If not for the telephone poles laid around the perimeter, passers-by might never know it was there. The shell of a former hydroelectric plant sat along the southern edge of the island, overlooking a field of large boulders. Water from the James River trickled between the boulders. It was about a half mile from the picnic site to the ruins of the power plant, so it took Anna Mae, Summer, and Humpy a few minutes to get there. All heavy equipment had been removed from the Virginia Electric site after its closure in the early 1960s, leaving behind a cement shell. But it was still an imposing structure. Over the passing decades, teenagers left a colorful variety of graffiti inside the three massive wells that formerly housed its turbines. Three arches allowed water from the river to flow inside. The windows on the rectangular building were covered with steel mesh, and its walls were painted bluish-gray in most places. Streaks of green mold stained the exposed concrete everywhere else. On the edge of its dried-up dam, a row of valves were rusted into position. Humpy's heart leapt into his throat when he saw it up close, but Anna Mae and Summer had been there before. Three summers ago, when Humpy was too young to venture off with his cousins. Their families held their reunion at the island, and Humpy's older sister, Melissa, had showed Anna Mae and Summer around. They visited what remained of the antebellum era nail factory on the northwest side of the island, and then played hide and seek in the ruins of the power plant. Since then, Melissa had gone off to college at James Madison University making family reunions very boring for the Long Sisters. Hey, Humpy, Anna Mae shouted. Bet you can't walk across these rocks to the other side. Oh, that's too far, Humpy protested. Okay, how about halfway? While Humpy was eyeing his first foothold on the rocks, Anna Mae signaled to her sister. Summer quietly crept away. Come on, Humpy, you scaredy cat. You'll never get your hat back. Anna Mae slapped Humpy's baseball cap on her head for dramatic effect. The provocation must have worked, because Humpy scampered over the rocks to the middle of the Anna branch. The look of triumph on his face turned to worry, however, 
when he turned and saw Anna May standing alone on the shore. Where's Summer, he shouted. Feigning innocence, Anna May replied, Oh, well, where did she run off to? She spun around, letting her hair twirl. Maybe she went to explore the building. Come on, let's go see. Humpy scampered back to shore as quickly as he could manage. As soon as he set foot on shore, Anna May raced toward the skeletal concrete structure. Wait for me, Humpy yelled. Suddenly, Anna May stopped. She put her arm around Humpy as he ran up next to her, and she pressed her fingers over his lips. Shh, she said. I think I heard something. She cautiously led her cousin forward a few steps, then crouched. Do you hear that? Coming from over there? She pointed toward the woods. Humpy's imagination raced as the hot wind howled through the abandoned electric plant. Without warning, Summer jumped from behind a concrete wall, and Humpy screamed and fell to the ground. Summer and Anna May burst out laughing. <laughs> Scaredy cat! Scaredy cat, they chanted. Humpy quickly wiped away the tears that welled up in his eyes and put on an angry face. That's not funny. Whatever, Anna May said with a dismissive flick of her golden mane. Without so much as a second thought, Summer and she ran down a bike trail into the woods, leaving Humpy alone. He sat in the dirt and pouted. Are you all right, son? Two men appeared out of nowhere. Humpy had not heard anyone else, nor had he seen anyone follow him. Strangely, he was not afraid. The two were unnaturally pale and wore dirty blue trousers and torn white shirts. One was barefoot, and the other wore only one boot. It made Humpy smile. Are you lost? One of the men asked with a pleasant Midwestern accent. No, Humpy replied. My stupid cousin stole my favorite cap and now they won't give it back. Your cousin stole your cap? Oh, that's no way to treat Ken. The single-booted man took off his light blue cappy and placed it on Humpy's head. It sagged over his forehead and felt heavier than he expected. The Kepi's black leather visor was stiff, but hung loosely from the fabric. Why don't we teach those cousins of yours a lesson? It was cooler in the woods, but mosquitoes and gnats swarmed across the trail, and dog day cicadas sang in the trees. Summer and Anna Mae chatted and skipped down the trail, Did you see the look on Humpy's face when I jumped out? Summer opened her mouth, spread her eyes wide, and pretended to scream. Her sister burst out laughing and rubbed her eyes like she was crying. A stone bounced off the trail near their feet, and they jumped back. After they caught their breaths, they chastised each other for being so skittish. It's just Humpy, Anime said. Humpy, come on out, we know it's you. The woods fell silent, and the temperature dropped. Anna Mae and Summer began to shiver. Stop playing around, Humpy. Come on out of there. We should go back, Summer said. We can't leave him alone like that. Goosebumps raced on her arms. Before the sisters could turn, a man appeared on the trail. His uniform hung off his emaciated body in tatters, and his bloodshot eyes stared lifelessly. Summer and Anime screamed and ran in the opposite direction toward the old hydroelectric plant, but another man appeared in their path. Terrified, they doubled back, only to find the first specter closer than before. The sisters screamed again, collapsed on the trail, and covered their heads with their hands. Their fingers shook. Slowly, The chorus of insects returned, and Summer and Anna Mae looked up. They were alone. Without missing a beat, the sisters stood and raced back toward the picnic site. 
There was no sign of their cousin near the power plant, so they followed the trail until it opened up into the field. After a short distance, they saw Humpy standing off to the side of the trail, waiting for them. Anna Mae removed his cap from the pocket of her jean shorts and held it out. We're really sorry, Humpy, she said. We didn't mean to scare you so badly. Here's your hat. Please don't tell your folks we left you alone. Humpy grinned widely and adjusted his blue cappy. Forget it, he replied. I got a better one now. <laughs>